Oh, praise God. Okay, let me just lower this. Okay, why don't we just uh, bow forward our prayer as we come and listen to God's word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just want to thank you for this privilege that we have to come into this place to listen to your word. Uh, this afternoon, we want to pray for the Holy Spirit to be here, that more than the words of a man speaking, we will hear the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to us. And I pray for every young person that is gathered here this afternoon. We ask that more than receiving information into our minds, we will receive transformation in our hearts and in our lives. We welcome you, Lord, to speak to us. We thank you for your word. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. You know, this afternoon's topic is a very, very interesting one, especially as we are in the examination season. And this afternoon's word, as we continue on in the You Can series, the title is, You Can Win and Have Success. Okay, can you turn to your friend and say to them, You Can Win and Have Success. Amen. And just as a little short intro to this topic, we're going to show you a video which was produced a number of years back. And uh, let's see whether you recognize this person in the video. Let's watch this together. Hi, my name is Sam, founder, CEO, CFO, ABC DEF of Be A Winner Private Limited, the world's leading company in making people successful. What do you need to be successful in? School? Your homework? Securing a good future for yourself? Or well, that's where we can help you easily. Forget about the old school ways of doing things. Studying, cheating, swallowing your notes. Those are ways that you're going to be a guaranteed loser. But that's where we at Be A Winner Private Limited can take you, a loser, and change you into a winner. Introducing the all-new Bland Essence of Duck. All you need to do is to drink one bottle of this every day for the rest of your life. And I guarantee you will be a winner and have success in every aspect of your life. School, exams, homework, your career, whatever it is, you will be a winner! So how did we do this, you might ask? It's really simple. What we did was to mix in the brain cells of over 100 geniuses around the world with the extract of duck and voila, there you have it. Bland essence of duck. Of course, how we do it is for us to know and... and you not to find out. Well, don't hesitate. Call us right now at 1-900-BE-A-WINNER to order your lifetime supply of bland essence of duck to ensure that you forever will be a winner. Let's clap for Pastor Daniel, okay? <laughs> he did a great job. And as a bonus for all of you coming to youth service this afternoon, as on your way out, we'll gi give each of you a bottle of bland essence of duck. Okay, and uh, those friends that are not around, uh, they, their brain cells may be inside. That's why they're not around. You can win and have success. You know, this is a very uh, interesting video, very ridiculous, but you know, we are really, really living, young people, Let's listen together. We are really living in a success-obsessed world today. And the truth of the matter is that we all strive very hard to succeed in our studies, to push ourselves to, be, to, the, to be the best, to be the top. None of us want to lose out in life. We want to win. We want to be successful. And sometimes at any cost, because we really, really do not want to be a failure or be unsuccessful and lose out on the good things in life. And, and as I was preparing this sermon, I remember that, you know, even as I was growing up as a primary school kid, we had this national campaign. And this national campaign was a serious campaign, and it was really pushing uh, the, uh, the people in Singapore to be successful, to go for their best. And, and the words of the campaign song went like that. Good, better, best. Never let it rest until your good is better and your better best. And we were taught to sing this song, Good, better, best. Never let it rest till your good is better and your better best. Okay? And we were taught to sing this song. And I think some of your parents, or some of the parents that are sitting that side, they probably have heard this song. And, you know, we live in a kind of environment that we are keep 
we keep pushing ourselves to be better and better and more and more successful. I remember I was growing up, you know, my father uh, would really, really be kind of obsessed with us doing very well in our studies. And one of the ways he used to motivate me as a young boy growing up was to tell me, you better study hard. If not, you'll become a road sweeper. You know? And I heard that all throughout my life as a primary school kid. Well, the fact of the matter is, pushing ourselves hard to win, to succeed, well, the, the fact of the matter is, it does reward us with good things in life, right? Like status, wealth, even power. But the sad fact, if we are honest with ourselves, that we see in our world today is this that our obsession or, or the obsession of the world with success has resulted in oppression coming from success. Obsession with success has resulted in oppression coming as a result of success. You see, success at any cost and success from the wrong source is dangerous. And listen carefully. That is why we see in our world today Many people who are so-called successful, they are not happy. And they are not happy because success has, in fact, put many people on a roller coaster of happiness, yet together with that depression, yet together with that addiction, influences and aggression. There are many, many people in our world today, and including ourselves, that some of us may be going through that same thing. Success has brought about not just necessarily happiness, but he has brought about a sense of oppression. And as I, and as I think about us young people here in this room this afternoon, I, I, I just feel great concern in my heart because there are many, many of us who are actually being impacted by the stresses and the pressure to always win and to always be successful. And in this next slide that you'll see, it's a report that talks about the state of depression, okay? The invisible uh, illness, the state of depression in Singapore. And it was just quite recent, I think 2015 or 2016. And you zoom in on this part that talks about young people, okay? Next slide. You zoom in on this part that talks about young people. The statistics are quite concerning. One in four young person are now showing signs of depression are now showing signs of stresses and depression. In other words, there are issues of mental wellness that young people are going through. Four, one out of four, okay? So for every four person you count in this row here, one of the persons there will be going through that kind of uh, issues. And uh, some of you counting your friend, is it? Okay. Well, just listen to me, all right? This is not a funny issue, so let's not joke about it. Okay, Shh. But if you happen to be one of that four, I just want to throw in here, please seek help. Please let your parents know. Please let your friends know. Please let your cell leaders know if you're going through some form of depression, some form of sadness and depression that you can't break out of, do tell someone about it because it's not a joking matter. And experts actually tell us that this phenomena, okay, is going to be on the increase because of the competition that we're having in our schools, because of the competition that we're facing in our universities, and our whole world is getting more and more competitive, and people are going to face more stresses because of the need to succeed and the fear of failure. But listen to me, young people. Listen to me carefully. This afternoon, the Lord wants us to know that you and I, who are God's children, we can win and have success without being victims of oppression, without being victims of mental and emotional stresses that puts our lives into bondages and that ultimately will destroy us. And you see, being successful and winning in life are not bad or wrong ideas, but listen, being successful and winning in life, unfortunately, have become distorted and, in fact, worldly definitions of success, worldly definitions of, of winning have been cursed due to sin that have entered our world. And when sin entered into our world, 
Satan took dominion of all these things in our lives. And, and, and those things, they are meant to be a blessing for us. Being a successful person, being a prosperous person, being blessed by God have been cursed and distorted because of sin. And that is why Jesus says in John 10.10, 10, the thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and what? Destroy. But my purpose, Jesus says, is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Jesus came to give us a rich and satisfying life. In other words, Jesus came to give to us a winning and successful life. And Jesus came to break the curses, the lies, the distortion and destruction that Satan has put so many people under. And the false ideas that they've been deceived by about what it really means to be successful in life. So can you help me turn to your friend and say to them, Jesus wants you to be successful. Jesus wants you to win. Tell them that. God's way, okay? Jesus wants you to be successful. Jesus wants you to win God's way. And we have been studying the last couple of weeks on the seven times Jesus shed blood for us. And every time Jesus shed blood for us, as we have heard over the last few weeks, he brings about a divine exchange for the curses, for the sin that we are facing in our lives. And every time Jesus shed blood for us, he brought about a blessing by breaking the curses in our lives that destroy us. And each blessing in our life brings to us the blessing of living life to our fullest. In the last few weeks, we have learned about you can overcome. Amen? Say overcome. Last week we heard about you can be healed. Say healed. And we saw many young people coming forward to testify of healing. And this afternoon, the Lord wants us to experience the truth that through the blood of Jesus, you can win and have success. You can win and have success. Help me turn to your friend and say to them, you can win and have success. Help me tell them that, all right? And we do it God's way. Now, I'm going to take a couple of minutes just to give to you an understanding from the Bible about this whole aspect from Scripture. What exactly happened to the blessing and the promise of success that God gave to us? What exactly happened? So, we go right to the start, the beginning of God's Word in Genesis. And the Bible tells us right at the start in Genesis chapter 1, this was what was promised to us at the beginning by God. In Genesis 1, 28 to 30, the Lord says, God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the bees of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And so, and, and it was so. Basically, right at the beginning in Genesis, because Genesis is the book of beginning, right at the beginning, God promises us these things. Fruitfulness and multiplication. Fruitfulness and multiplication. He said, be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and increase. So God promises fruitfulness and multiplication. Not only that, God promises unlimited provision. That is why he says the plant, the animals, all these things will bear fruit. They will, there will be ample supply. There's unlimited provision. And not only that, God gave to us not just fruitfulness and multiplication, not just unlimited provision. God gave to us authority and dominion. In other words, authority and dominion means we win, we conquer. We are able to have dominion over the, the things of the earth. So right at the start, the Lord blessed us and He gave us the blessing to win to prosper, to have, to have success over all the earth. And in God, there was no lack of resources to fulfill His purposes for our lives. So right at the beginning, that was promised to us. But listen to what happened because of sin. Genesis chapter 1, God promises us all of these blessings, but we move to Genesis chapter 3, where we see what happened. All right, Genesis chapter 3, verses 17 to 19. To Adam, He said... 
because you listen to your wife and ate from the fruit from the uh, ate fruit from the tree which I commanded you that you must not eat from curse is the ground or cursed is the ground because of you through painful toil you will eat food from the from it all the days of your life it will produce thorns and thistles for you and you'll eat the plants of the field by the sweat of your brow you'll eat your food until you return to the ground since from it you were taken for thus you are and to dust you are written so God promised in Genesis chapter 1 fruitfulness multiplication dominion unlimited supply but because of the sin of man because of the sin of man what has happened well the ground has become cursed there are thorns and thistles now on the ground that were supposed to be fertile, that were supposed to be fruitful. There are thorns and thistles. And work, which was supposed to be enjoyable, work that was supposed to be fruitful, became painful toil. And then we sweat. There was sweat of your brow, talking about stresses, talking about pressures, talking about struggles, talking about striving, talking about failures. And all these things happen because of sin. And the Lord says, the ground, the ground is cursed. And, and this curse in the ground, if you can look in front here, was represented by thorns and thistles. When we, f- when we fell into sin, when we sinned against the Lord, the ground was cursed. And the ground was cursed, represented by thorns and thistles. And that is why, no matter how hard we work, no matter how hard we strive, we may experience success, we may experience some form of success, but regardless, all these successes that we see in the world still bring stresses, still bring pressures, still bring depression, because the ground has been cursed due to sin. If you understand what I mean, can you wave at me and make some noise? Right? Now, this is very important for you to understand. That because of sin, no matter how hard you work, you will, you will find that you are still under pressure, you are still under stresses, you are somehow trapped in that competitive spirit that you cannot break out of and, and, and it is, God's word is so true because we really, really see the increase in mental wellness issues happening in our world, even though we are so modern now and so blessed now and so prosperous now, yet all these things happen. So what, what, then what is the solution, right? The ground has been cursed by the thorns, represented by thorns and thistles. What then is the solution? We fast forward from Genesis to Matthew chapter 27, verses 27 to 31. And this was what had to happen. Matthew 27, verses 27 to 21. Then the governors took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and they twisted a crown of thorns and set it on his head they put a staff in his right hand they knelt in front of him and mocked him hail king of the jews they said they spat on him and they took the staff and struck him on the head again and again they mocked him they took the rope and his own clothes and put his own clothes on him and they led him away to crucify him i need i need two guys to help me demonstrate okay in order to save some time uh, can i have you brother in the orange, is it red or orange? Yeah, can, can you please come? All right, let's clap for him. Okay, come here. Just, just stand here first, okay? You look so decent that I'm going to ask you to be the soldier. Okay, oh, maybe ask you to be Jesus because you're wearing red. Okay, cool. Okay, and uh, can I have, uh, yeah, have you here in the blue polo? Can you come right to the front and help me, okay? Now listen, don't miss this picture. And if you can't see, just stretch a little bit, okay? Don't miss this picture. The ground was cursed, right? And God says the, 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 the physical or the visual representation of that curse was thorns and thistles. And we have right here Jesus, okay? Look like you're a bit battered already, like uh, a bit like Jesus. Like that. Uh, 
suffering, suffering. Hey, don't look at me, la. just look at your friends, okay? All right, just look like Jesus a, a bit, okay? And, and the soldier was mocking him. Can you mock him? Ha ha, okay. <laughs> Okay, la, can you be more like Roman soldier? Yeah, he was mocking him, right? He was ridiculing him, was just saying things and spitting at him. You can spit at him. No, okay, you're so kind. Should I found someone more cruel? But don't miss this. They, and then what did the Bible say? They took a crown of thorns. They found some thorns and they took the crown of thorns. Do your job. Okay. Now, this crown of thorns represent the curse, the curses, right, of our work, the curses of the ground, the curses against our success and our fruitfulness. They took this crown of thorns and they put it on the head of Jesus. Okay. And remember, it's a crown of thorns. Thank you. You can stand by the side first. Okay. I help you lah. I'm a bigger size soldier. He took the crown of thorns and he placed it on Jesus. Remember, it's a crown of thorns. The moment they pierced the crown of thorns into the head of Jesus, it will start to bleed. And the Bible tells us what did they do. After they put the crown of thorns, they struck it. And every time they struck it, it went deeper. Right? And... Do you feel very wet? Okay. And as the crown of thorns was on the head of Jesus, it started to bleed until his shirt became red. And it started to bleed. Now listen to Pastor Roland, okay? Can you just like bend, bend just bend a little bit? All right, cool. Okay, okay, great. Now listen. They took the crown that represents the curse and they put it on Jesus and they kept hitting him and every time they hit the crown of thorns into the head of Jesus blood started to flow now let me ask you this question when the blood started to flow from the head of Jesus where did the blood go the blood started to hit and touch the ground every drop of blood that began to shed from the head of Jesus Begin to touch the ground, the ground of curse, the ground of striving, the ground of fruitlessness, the ground of depression, the ground of stresses, the ground of unfruitfulness, the ground of pain, the ground of, of, of suffering, the ground of lack of success, the ground of failure. Every single drop from the, from the head of Jesus began to touch the ground, the very ground that was being cursed where they picked up this crown of corns and they, and they put it upon him and they pierced it and they thought it was a really funny thing like some of us were laughing but later did they know the very crown that was cursed that was placed upon the head of Jesus and caused him to bleed every single drop of blood had to touch the ground so that we can be set free amen come on give Jesus a big clap of praise hallelujah and give our two brother <laughs> thank you very much you can go back give our two brother a big big clap of thanks Do not miss that. And this was God's perfect plan of salvation. That even though the ground was cursed, even though the ground was cursed by thorns and thistles, one day there would be a group of soldiers that will pick up this crown and place it upon the head of the Son of God. And they will pierce his head and they'll beat it and make it make sure that those horns went right in. And as the blood flowed from the head of Jesus, every drop touched the ground so that we can win and have success. So that what God promised to us in Genesis chapter 1 can become redeemed for you and I. You know, when I prepared this sermon, when, when I was looking at this picture, I just cried and cried and cried in my room. I say, God, it is so amazing. What the soldiers thought was a funny mockery that they can 
do and, 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 and torture Jesus with became the very thing that we needed for our lives. Come on, go ahead and give Jesus, who loves us so much, a big clap of praise. Hallelujah. So this afternoon, God wants us to come to a place of divine exchange. This afternoon, God wants us to come to the place where through the blood of Jesus that fell to the ground, that fell from His head to the ground, we can, have, we can win and have true success. And this afternoon, there are three areas that God wants us to receive so that we can have success in our lives. Three areas that God wants us to receive so that we can win and have success in our lives. Firstly, this afternoon, God wants us to receive sufficiency in exchange for our worries. Sufficiency in exchange for our worries. God wants us to know, I and you have more than enough. Through the blood of Jesus that flowed from His head, we can receive sufficiency versus worries. I have more than enough. In Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 27, the Lord says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? Listen, there are young people here this afternoon. You are you are really, really struggling with tremendous worries. You may be laughing on the outside, you may be cracking jokes on the outside, you may be just looking real chill on the outside, but inside, you are worrying. Listen to what God says to you. This, these four powerful words in 1 Peter 5, 7, cast your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. He cares for you. And the Matthew scripture that we read just now, it is basically saying the same thing. God cares for you. He really cares for you. And if God cares for you, you need not worry. You need not be trapped in a cycle, in, in a bondage of, of worrying. And what, what is the lack? What is the worry you're facing today? Do you feel like you're a loser? Because maybe you're worried about your finances. Maybe you're worried about your possessions. Maybe you're worried about time, right? And Jesus says this, you know. He says, how, how many of you, by worrying, you can add a single hour to your life? And, and the, the modern way of, of putting it is like that. Some of us, we worry so much. And we worry maybe we don't have enough time for our studies. We don't have enough time to do well. We worry so much about time and we spend so much time worrying about time that we have no more time to worry about. You understand what I'm trying to say? We are so overwhelmed by, oh, I, I can't finish this in time. I don't have enough time. And we worry and we struggle. And the more we worry and struggle about time, time is taken up and there's no more time left for you. But God says He cares for you. Can you help me turn to your friend and say, He cares for you? He cares for you. Really, really receive that into your heart. He cares for you. God cares for you. And He says to you that you are valuable and you are more valuable than all of creation. And He will provide whatever you need for your life. And as I was preparing this, the Lord shows me that there are some of us here, actually, you don't lack anything, you know. You, you come from well-to-do family. You don't lack anything. You, you have money. You have clothing to wear, etc., etc. Yet the Lord tells me that while some of us here, we are well-to-do, we don't lack anything, but somehow there's something in you that keep wanting to buy, to possess more and more things. You want the latest gadgets, you want the, you want the coolest clothing, you keep worrying that you'll lose out to others, and you compare yourself with friends who are richer, or friends who come from better schools, or you feel like, hey, how come these this friends from, uh, that I hang out with, they, look, they always look better than I, and, and there are some young people that I've helped, 
they, they come from well-to-do family, in fact, wealthy families, and yet the fact of the matter is some of them actually have stolen money, and sometimes even from their own homes, just to satisfy the need for more and more things. Now, you know why you feel like that? You know why we feel like that? Even though we are well supplied, even though we are, we are well to do, we keep wanting more and more. Do you know why we feel like that? This is what Jesus says. Are you, are you not much more valuable than they? In other words, there are some of us here. Our value is all external. What, whatever things are external, clothing, gadgets, Money, looks, all these external things are things that we f- make us feel valuable. And because they're external things, you find that you never have enough of them. You keep wanting more and more of them. And when you don't have them, you worry about it. And you feel that you have a lack and you keep worrying about it. But listen to what God says to you. You are of high value in the eyes of God. You are of high value in the eyes of God. You need to know on the inside this afternoon that you are of high value in the eyes of God. You need to know that in the eyes of Jesus, you are a winner. You are of high value to Him. Listen to Pastor Roland. Listen to me very, very carefully. This afternoon, some of us need a divine exchange. The reason why we are worrying, the reason why we are stressed up is because we put our value on the wrong things. And when we put our value on the external things, and when we don't get those external things, which you will never be able to get all of them, then you begin to put yourself in a stressful situation because you think that you need those things to feel valuable. But God says to us this afternoon, your value is on the inside. It's on the inside. It's not on things on the outside. And when you know on the inside, to the love of God, to the, to the blood of Jesus that sets you free of how valuable you are, then there is an assurance, there is a calmness on the inside of you. Amen? And you will know that you have more than enough. And you can win and have success when you stop worrying and you know that you have enough, more than enough in your life, and God will give to you. And I want to assure you, I've been a student um, probably much longer than many of you. I want to assure you, when you trust God, and you know that He's your sufficiency, He will even multiply your time. He will help you to make use of your time so that you'll find your time being multiplied. Amen? Amen. So the first area of exchange that God wants us to receive is to exchange our sufficiency for worries in our life. And I have more than enough. Can you turn to your friend and say to them, I have more than enough in God. I have more than enough in God. And, and just now I mentioned this, this, this fact. If you, if you are stealing, it's wrong, okay? If you are stealing, it's wrong. Please Talk to your leaders. Please confess to your parents because doing that does not please the Lord. And if you are stealing so that you can buy more things to feel good about yourself, please tell someone about it. Please confess it. Secondly, God wants us not just to receive sufficiency in exchange for our worries. Secondly, God wants us to receive satisfaction in exchange for our weariness. Satisfaction in exchange for our weariness. I can enjoy what I do. I can enjoy what I do. Remember I told you just now, because of sin and the cursed condition, work becomes an enjoyable thing. It becomes a stressful thing. It becomes a striving thing. But God says today that blood of Jesus can set us free so that we can exchange weariness and receive satisfaction in our lives and enjoy what we can do. Jeremiah 31 verse uh, 25 says, For I have fully satisfied the weary soul. I have replenished every sorrowful soul. Some of us here, young people, we are, we are feeling so weary. We are feeling so tired. We are feeling so, so stressed up and fed, fed up that we are in a pressure cooker. We, we, we are just so wearied by it. And the fact of the matter is, I've We've, as pastors, we have sat down with young people who just cannot cope with the weariness of, of, of striving, 
with the weariness of wanting to do well through earthly definition. And many of them are like that. T tired, unfulfilled, and finding no meaning. And you know, the scary thing is that there are some young people, their sole purpose in life is found only in their studies. And when they don't do well, their world collapses. Just a couple of days ago, on the 30th of April, there was this news report that came out, okay? Uh, sorry, 29th of April, there's this news report that came out. There were 20 Indian students, okay, in India, there were 20 Indian students. When their results came out, they committed suicide. 20 of them committed suicide, killed themselves because they failed their exams. But there was one problem. The exam results had discrepancies. In other words, some of them actually did not fail, but they thought they failed, and they killed themselves. Now, when I read that, I just cannot picture in my mind 20 young Indian students killing themselves for nothing. <laughs> Okay, and I'm not saying that if you fail exams, you kill yourself, it's okay, okay? Please don't get me wrong. Don't go back and tell your mother the wrong thing, okay? But they killed themselves. Why? Because their whole life is placed on results and studies, and when they don't do well, they kill themselves. And when you see this, this is the evidence of the curse that is taking place because of sin, the curse of Satan at work. So I want to say this to you and, and listen to me very carefully. If this afternoon you have lost the joy and the satisfaction of being a good student so that you can bring glory to God, listen, it is not God's will for you. If you have lost the joy of being a good student, if you have lost the joy of just doing your best in your studies so that you can bring God joy, if you have lost the joy of it, and if the stresses and striving in your studies have become bigger than Jesus in your life, you are not winning and you are not experiencing true success in your life. And some of us here, some of you here, you feel weary. In fact, you feel that you are burning out. You know, there's a new phenomenon in our world today. How many of you have heard of midlife crisis? Have you heard of midlife crisis, right? Do you know that there's a new phenomenon in our world today known as quarter life crisis? By 20s, early 20s, 23, 24, 25, there's a new phenomenon that people in their early 20s are suffer suffering crisis already. You don't have to you don't have to wait till midlife, okay? So the 20s are actually university students. They are already suffering quarter life crisis, burning out feeling weary and losing satisfaction in life and, and losing the joy of, 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 of studying for God and being a good student. Well, let's watch this video of how this girl was going through something like that and how the Lord ministered to her. Let's watch this video of Rachel. I was born into a Christian family and I've been in FCBC all my life. I accepted Christ in G-Kids while we were still in Expo. However, as a child, I never really knew God personally. He was just this distant and very unreal figure that I said thank you to before every meal. Back in secondary school, I found a group of lovely friends and I took a lot of pride in my studies. I did well both academically and in my CCAs. At that time, being a Christian was more of like an obligation than anything else. My church and cell attendance became very irregular and I only went at times because I would feel guilty not going. That all changed halfway through my first year in junior college. I was totally caught off guard by the many adjustments that I had to make. I didn't like change, but now I had to make new friends, take on new subjects, adjust to a totally different school culture. And even if it was unspoken, there was just this constant sense of competition and everybody seemed to do so well in everything. Maybe it was the change in environment or the desire to be smarter, to look nicer and be thinner than everyone else. Whatever it was, it really made me feel like I hit rock bottom. 
I got so mad at myself every time I received a grade that wasn't an A or when I felt like I ate too much. I was obsessed with wanting to get on the honour roll and obsessed with counting calories. There was hardly any space for God in my heart in the midst of all the hatred and anger. For the longest time, I couldn't look into the mirror without feeling disgusted at the way I look. I started to harm myself too because I felt like I was getting what I deserved for not being good enough. Like as if through this physical pain, my flaws were being accounted for. When I had to go to school or church or dance ministry practice sessions, I would always try and put up a front to show people that I was okay because I was very ashamed of the state I was in and I didn't want anyone to think that I was vying for attention. Just when I felt like there was no way out for me, God opened my eyes to see His goodness. One day, I arrived early for dance ministry practice and since I was alone, I decided to warm up by dancing on my own. The song Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus came up on shuffle on my MP3 player and as I danced, the simple lyrics just resounded so strongly in my heart and this unexplainable peace just washed over me and I had goosebumps all over. The moment didn't last very long, but this glimpse of peace really filled my heart with hope. The days that followed weren't immediately fine, but even as I struggled with my self-image, I clung desperately onto God's love and the peace He revealed to me that day. God began to show me His love through the many people who cared for me all that time. I started to acknowledge the love and concern in my parents' eyes, to take the words of encouragement from my friends to heart. The whole process of healing was painfully slow, but knowing that God is seeing this through and that He will make it better for me in His time made it all so much more bearable. My A-levels came along, but I was not as anxious as I thought I would be. In fact, it was the least stressful exam of my entire JC life. I thought that I was done for actually, because I didn't even complete most of my papers. But when the results were released, I was shocked speechless. I did really well and I finally got into the school's honour roll. Also, I started to eat more regularly. This self-image issue is something I still struggle with, but I promised God that I would eat all three meals every day and always remind myself that I am fearfully and wonderfully made in His likeness. In so many ways, God has shown me His tremendous love for me. See, the thing about depression is that it just makes one so self-centered. My world had purely revolved around how I could be my own idea of perfection. Looking back now, I realized that God had placed so many people in my life to keep me from sinking deeper into this condition, but I just couldn't see past all the lies then to the love that God had to offer me. When I was lost and couldn't find a way out, He gave me peace and strength. When I stopped striving to be my own idea of perfection and trusted in His plans for me, He gave me the results that I had been praying for. I am just so blessed and so thankful for this God who looks out for me even when I can't even bring myself to acknowledge Him on my worst days. I am so undeserving of His love, but He loves me anyway. He is so good to me. To God be all the glory. I really like this video because it really, really shows the divine exchange that can happen in, in our lives. Amen? And remember what she said in the video, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. And, and this afternoon, this is what the Lord is going to do in our lives. As we turn our eyes to Him, something will begin to change. That sense of of satisfaction versus weariness will be exchanged, will be exchanged. And some of you who are facing weariness, you have lost the joy of studying, you have lost the joy of being a student that will glorify God. God says to you, turn your eyes upon Jesus and let that exchange take place. So firstly, three areas that God wants us to receive in order to win and have success. Firstly, God wants us to exchange our uh, our worries for uh, sufficiency. Secondly, God wants, uh, wants us to exchange our weariness for a sense of satisfaction. And lastly, this afternoon, we can win and have success when we come to Jesus 
and allow the blood of Jesus to do a work in our lives, we can exchange worldliness, worldliness for true success so that we can become winners, winners in God's eyes. You know, when Jesus came and a crown of thorns was placed over him and he shed blood, he did this to rightfully uh, to take back what rightfully belongs to us. Basically, God, Jesus took back, took back from Satan and took back from Satan's dominion and whatever sin has caused in terms of destruction, God took back for us and redeemed for us godly success. Jesus took back for us prosperity. Jesus took back for us fruitfulness. Jesus took back for us sufficiency and satisfaction. And all these things were promised to us in, 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 in Genesis chapter 1. All these things were promised to us. These are rightfully ours. Amen? These are rightfully ours. We, we do not need to do what that 20 Indian students did, did. We do not need to do what Rachel had to struggle with in terms of eating disorder. We do not need to go into all these things because the curse can be broken and we can take back through the blood of Jesus what rightfully belong to us. And today we can have true success and we can win in God. But listen to me very carefully on this last point. Okay, listen to me very carefully. Worldly definitions of success are lies that will lead us to destruction. A true winner, a truly successful person is one who pursues to do what is right in the eyes of the Lord. If you, pers if you pursue worldly definitions of success, if you pursue greed, if you pursue success at all cause and success from the wrong source, it will lead to destruction. But a true winner in the eyes of God, a truly successful person, is he or she who pursues to do what is right in the eyes of the Lord. Psalms 1, 1 to 3. Okay, and this is one of the Psalms that you, you must memorize in your life. You must memorize. Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers, but their delight is in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted al along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves neither wither and they prosper in all that they do. If you are pursuing worldly success and worldly success being number one in the eyes of the world has become bigger than God in your life, today you need to return to God. Today you need to come back and say, God, I want to put you first. I want to seek to please you above all else. And I want to share with you that one of the most important lessons in my life as a student, okay, and you can apply it almost immediately in your life right now. One of the most important lessons in my life as a student that brought me blessing and godly success was this. Never miss church during examinations. Never miss church during examinations. Come on, go ahead and clap for Jesus. By clapping, you agree, right? <laughs> Or by clapping, you disagree, I don't know. Never miss church during exams, okay? This is, this is what brought blessing to my life. And listen, during my secondary school and JC days, and I've, some of you have heard this before, before every revision of any topic of examination, before revision okay, of any topic, I would spend at least 15 minutes or sometimes even longer worshipping and praying before I revise for my paper. And some of my friends say, are you crazy? You know, you spend 15 to 20 minutes, that means you have 15 to 20 minutes lesser to revise. I say, no. When I spend 15 and 20 minutes to, re to, to praise and worship God and to pray, I don't lose 15 to 20 minutes. I gain more time. And the next thing I'm going to tell you is going to shock you. From my secondary school out to my JC and to my university days in NTU, 
when it comes to examination period, I never sleep or I never slept beyond later than 11 p.m. I'll just sleep and I'll study and I'll worship and, and I'll rest and trust God, okay? And, and I'll tell you this, these are the ways of the Lord. Now, I'm not therefore saying that you cannot stay up late to study. If you need to stay up late, you stay up late. But understand this, choose to glorify God. And, and what God has blessed me in my life is I, is I graduated with honors degree from NTU. And I want, to, I want to pass this on to you. Do not seek success or winning through worldly ways, but do it through God, God's ways. All right? Now, I want to just, as we're going to close this message, I want to address the issue of failure. I want to address the issue of failure. When you listen to a message like that, you can win and have success. Okay, are we therefore saying, Pastor Roland, are you saying that I would never fail? My mama's going to scold me and my parents are going to say, are you sure your pastor teaches you the right thing? You know, uh, and, and please don't misquote me. What about failures, right? How many of you want to know the answer, right? What about failures? We say God wants us to win, God wants us to have success, but what about failures? Listen, and you know that in our church, we will never ever tell you that you can go through life without testing. We will never ever tell you that you will go through life without problems. We will never ever tell you right here in youth service that you will never go through life without failures. Listen to me very carefully. The blood of Jesus shed from His head gives us victory to overcome even our failures. Even our failures. And some of us here this afternoon, we are struggling with failures. We have experienced failures and, and that failure somehow have knocked you down, knocked you out and you find that you cannot recover from it and you're stuck in that failure. It could be a test, it could be an exam, it could be a major exam, it could be you did not get to the school that you really wanted to get in and you're stuck in that failure. You're stuck in that sense of failure and you find yourself uh, losing confidence and you find yourself never recovering from that sense of failure. Listen, this afternoon the Lord tells us His blood that flowed from His head gives us victory even to overcome our failures. You know why? When Jesus went to the cross and when He hung there on the cross completely naked, do you know when Jesus hung on the cross and when the whole world looked at Him, He was a complete failure in the eyes of those who was looking at Him. Jesus hung on the cross and He was a complete hopeless case. Jesus hung on the cross. In fact, the Bible says in the days of Jesus, whoever hung on the cross, this person is cursed. This person is a failure. This person is hopeless. But Jesus went through all of that so that you and I can be set free from the failures and the shortcomings of our life. Come on, go ahead and give Jesus a big clap. And now I want to say this to you. Some of you here, the Lord shows me you are stuck in a sense of failure and you can't get yourself out of it. Today, let the blood of Jesus be applied to your life and you get yourself out of that sense of failure. You get yourself out of the trap of failure and you lift yourself up and say, God, I'm going to be a winner because of you. I'm going to overcome this, this defeat of failure and I'm going to rise up in victory. Amen? If you want that for your life, shout amen right now. Listen, failure does not mean you failing does not mean you are a failure losing does not mean you are a loser failing does not mean you are a failure losing does not mean you are a loser and the blood of Jesus is able to give us victory Romans 8:37 to 38 says no despite all these things listen look at the word of god overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death, nor life, neither angels, nor demons, neither our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. In other words, failure can never overcome you. Amen? And you can win and have success, true winning and true success, true God. And you can be a winner in the eyes of God. 
I'm going to read you a, a testimony and we're going to bring the service to a close. And this testimony is by this brother who wrote and just a beautiful testimony. His name is Wesley. I don't know whether he's here or he's uh, attending other services. but His name is Wesley and we thank God for writing this testimony. And Wesley says, Hi, my name is Wesley. Not, not me, okay, but Wesley. I accepted Christ when I was in secondary three. My parents always have high expectations of me. And I too have high expectations of myself. In order to focus on my O and A levels, listen, I neglected God and had no time for cell or church for three plus years. Last year, when, my a -level, uh, when I got my A level results, I was devastated. My grades were C, C, E, D, C, C, E, D. The 90th percentile to get into uni was B, C, C, C. And Wesley says, I was torn up. I'm not going to lie. The subpar results I got led me to question my existence, my faith, my everything. It didn't stop there. I was chided every weekend by my parents when I booked out from NS because I didn't fulfill their expectations. For a year, I went to countless open houses and applied to universities, but each one rejected me. One thing led to another. I lost people whom I have caught friends because I was so stressed by this issue. I became tired. I feared failing even more. I feared, I feared failing my parents' high expectations for me, for not meeting the societal uh, normatives that being a JC student means you will go into uni. I cut myself from all my groups of friends for an entire year. I didn't know who to talk to. I felt that God has led me on a path, one that He has planned for me. He brought me back to my best friend, who gradually brought me back to myself. We had many, many heart-to-heart -heart talks. Those talks were what gradually cleared my mind. I sought help from God and myself. They prayed for favour on my behalf and encouraged me. I learned to surrender to God as I continued to apply for university, universities. What He had for me was nothing short of a miracle. Nothing short of a miracle. Initially, I was caught up for an interview and a week later on 30th April, I got into NTU Mechanical Engineering. Praise the Lord. Okay, God's miracle. And... Wesley went on to say this, Though I have not fully overcome the fear of failure or rejection, I now know what to do. He now knows know what to do. To turn to God in prayer, be persistent in prayer, and trust God. And trust God. Come on, go ahead and give Jesus a big clap. Is that Wesley? <laughs> okay, I don't know. Right? Uni students should not be in this service ready, right? You know, this afternoon, God wants us to know, like the story of Wesley, like the story of Rachel, this afternoon, through the blood of Jesus that was shed from His head, that hit the ground of curses, hit the ground of failures, through the blood of Jesus, we can have a divine exchange that will help us to win and have success. This afternoon, God wants us to exchange our worries for sufficiency. He wants us to know that we can have more than enough. This afternoon, God wants us to exchange the, the weariness that we feel in our lives, in our hearts, for satisfaction that comes from Him. That we can come back to enjoying what we do. And for many of you here, enjoying what you do is to enjoy being a student. And in your studies, enjoying it and bring glory to God. God wants us to say, you need not feel weary. You can have a sense of satisfaction. This afternoon, God wants us to exchange worldliness, worldly thinking, worldly ideas of success. God wants us to exchange wor our worldliness for true success so that we can be winners in the eyes of God. You know, when I, when I thought about what Jesus did for us when he was ridiculed 
And when the crown of thorns was placed over his head, and they just keep beating his head and keep mocking him, and blood started started to, to flow. I just started to think, what did the soldiers say to him? What were the soldiers saying to Jesus when they were beating him? What did the soldiers say to Jesus when they placed a crown of thorns over him? What were some of the words that they were saying to Jesus? And I was just asking the Lord, Lord, what were they saying to you when they were mocking you? Because the Bible says they were mocking you. What were they saying to you when they were beating your head? What were they saying to you? And I, and I sense the Lord saying this to me. You know, when the soldiers were beating me, when the soldiers were mocking me, when the soldiers were ridiculing me, do you know these were the words they were saying to me? Loser! You are lousy! Jesus, you are a failure! Call yourself the king? You are a failure. You are cursed because you're going to go to the cross. As they beat him on the head, he says, you are hopeless. You can't even save yourself, Jesus. You can't even save yourself and you call yourself a king. You are hopeless. Jesus, you are not good enough to save the world. You are not good enough to be the son of God. Jesus, you are just second best. You're not even anyone that can come close to being king. And the words can go on and on. And you know, these are the very words that many of us hear on a daily basis in our hearts and in our minds. These are the very words that have been spoken to us even by others, unfortunately. About two years back, my son was in, is, is in primary school this year, he's in primary six. About two years back when he was in primary four, one day he came back with his results. And he did really badly for his results. And in my anger as a father, I, I looked at him, I went to his room and I said, you are so stupid. You are so stupid. How can you do so badly? You are so stupid. You are so stupid. And I shouted at him. And I, and I stormed out of his room. A couple of minutes later, I just peeked at the room and he was just crying and crying and crying. With, with the mummy sitting beside him. And the only thing that was coming out of his mouth was this, were these words, Daddy called me stupid. Papa called me stupid. Father, Daddy called me stupid. And he just kept saying those words over and over again. And, and I repented before God. I said, God, how can I call this creation of yours, this son that you have blessed me with, stupid. And I wounded his heart and I wounded his soul and I wounded his spirit. And as far as I can remember from that day onwards, even until now, I've never called him stupid. In fact, you can ask my wife, Pastor Lai Fan. I've never even scolded him harshly anymore when he doesn't do well in his studies. I just say, no, God. If the blood of Jesus took all these words, if Jesus took all these words and put it upon Himself so that we can be set free, then how can I use these words on a person I love? How can I even use these words on myself if your blood sets me free from all these things so that I can win and have success? You know, this afternoon, God wants to give us a divine exchange. Why don't we just close our eyes and bow our heads right now? Everybody in this room, close your eyes and bow your heads right now. Nobody moving around, nobody looking around because this is a divine moment and Jesus is here with us. I want to speak the next couple of minutes to a very important group of people. You are very important to us and you are our friends who are here for the very first time. You have never given your life to Jesus Christ. Someone invited you to come to church. You have never asked Jesus to come into your life. You have never invited Him to come in. I want to say this to you because you're so important to me and all your, all your friends here. If you have never asked Jesus to come into your life, today, Jesus wants you to allow Him to come into your life.
to receive Him into your heart. Because without Jesus in your life, you cannot be set free from all these worldly definitions of success, from all these worldly definitions of what it means to win. Without Jesus, you will not have the answer to set you free from depression. You will not have the answer to set you free from weariness. You will not have the answer to set you free from the stresses and the pressures that you feel as a young person. And this afternoon, you have never given your life to Jesus Christ. You are here not by chance, but you are here because Jesus is giving you a chance to receive Him. You are not here because of coincidence. You are here because Jesus loves you so much that He brought you here. And if you have never given your life to Jesus Christ, but today as you sat here listening to this sermon, you say, Pastor Roland, I want to receive this Jesus. I never knew that there was someone that will bleed so much for me. I never knew that there was someone that became a curse for me. Pastor Roland, I want to receive Jesus into my life this afternoon. If that is who you are, I want to help you do that right now, right this very moment. What you need to do is follow me in a very simple prayer. And this prayer is designed for those of us who have never asked Jesus to come into our life, but we want to ask Him to come into our life and we want to do it seriously this afternoon, this prayer is designed for you. And what you need to do is simply to follow me word for word and line by line. And as you pray this prayer, all your friends here at youth service, they will pray together with you. Alright, so with nobody looking around, this is a very personal time. Pray together with me this prayer right now. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, Come on, 20 times louder. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus I, need you. I need you. I can never be a success, I can never be a success. Without, you, Lord Jesus. without you, Lord Jesus. I need you, Lord Jesus. I need you, Lord Jesus. Because without you, because without I, can you never overcome my I can never overcome my failures. I open up my heart to you this afternoon. And I invite you to come into my heart. I invite, I invite you to come into my heart to live inside of me to live inside of me to be my best friend to be my best friend to be the one who helps me to be the one who helps me to be the one who gives me life and peace to be the one who gives me to be the one who blesses me lord to be the one who blesses me lord with success with success in my life in my life thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you lord Thank you, Lord. With all our eyes closed, all our heads bowed, if you prayed that prayer with me for the very first time, you have never prayed it before, but this is the first time you are praying this prayer. I want to know who you are because I want to speak a word of blessing over you. Okay, so with nobody looking around, everyone's eyes are closed, every head, all heads are bowed. At the count of three, if you prayed that prayer with me at the count of three, one, two, three, I just want you to lift up your hand very quickly so that I can see who you are because we love you and we want to connect with you. Here we go. One, two, three. Lift up your hand. Say, Pastor, I pray that prayer with you. Just lift up your hand and just indicate to me that you have. Yes, I see your hand there. Is there anyone else? Yeah, just see your hand back there. Keep your hand lifted. Just keep your hand lifted. Yeah, anyone else? You know, you can't, if you are just shy to lift it all the way, just lift it halfway. It doesn't matter. Keep your hands lifted. Those of you with your hands lifted, let me just pray for you. Father, I just want to thank you for these friends, Lord, who are lifting up their hands to say that they invite Jesus to come into their life. And Lord, I pray for them that beginning today, their lives will never be the same again because they will have the greatest friend who will come into their lives and be their best friend, Lord, who will help them, who will walk through all of life with them. Bless our friends, be with them, and we want to welcome them into this family. In Jesus' name we pray. You can put down your hands right now. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Come on, go ahead and give Jesus a big clap of praise right now. Hallelujah. Oh, you want to clap for Jesus? You clap loudly, okay? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Listen to me very carefully. I saw a number of you lifting your hands and maybe you did not lift up your hands but you really wanted to and you just feel shy. Please tell your friend who brought you to church that you, you want to receive Jesus, okay? Maybe in a little, uh, you receive Jesus or you say a similar prayer in a small group setting um, um, this week. You know, but you've never done something publicly, tell your friend. And what is going to happen is that those of you who lifted up your hands, later on, your friends or the leaders that they're taking care of, uh, they, will, they will help you. They'll bring you to a room where we can connect with you, spend time with you, chill a little bit with you so that we can know who you are. All right. And FCBC, young people, listen to Pastor Roland. If you brought a friend to church, 
okay? When we close the service, please ask your friend, hey, do you want to receive Jesus into your life? If your friends say yes, just bring them to the consolidation uh, room so that we can connect with them, so that we can uh, spend time with them. Amen? Amen. We're going to close the service, but the Lord is going to minister to us right now. Many, many of you. And I'm going to have one last quote for you. When you have Jesus in your life, you are no longer trying to be a success. You are a success. When you have Jesus in your life, you're no longer trying to be a success. You are a success. And the Lord shows me many of you need to come. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid. And say, Pastor, I come in, so I have a problem. No, 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 I don't want to come. No, listen to me. You're worried. You're stressed up. You're going through a, 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 a mal or even a severe depression. You, feel, you are sleepless, you are restless. The Lord says, come and allow me to minister to you. And some of you here, the reason why you are failing, the reason why you are just, just not being able to, to be successful in what you do is because you have embraced worldly success. You have put God last. You have not even considered God. God says, come to Him and put Him first today so that He can help you. Now listen to me. There are many of you here this afternoon you need to overcome that failure that you are stuck in. And you need to allow the blood of Jesus to come and cleanse you and wash you clean of that effect of that failure so that you can be set free and move on to victory. How many of you can say amen to that? Amen. Now listen to Pastor Roland very carefully. Okay. When we, when we sing, and I'm going to invite you to stand a moment. When we sing, and when you stand and you want to come forward for ministry, when you come forward, I do not want you to kneel down. I want you to just stand because I want to pray uh, uh, in, in a big group, okay? Mass prayer together with you when we minister to you. Okay, can we just stand up right now? And the moment we start to sing, you say, God, I want to have that divine exchange. I want to receive the blood of Jesus and the touch of the blood of Jesus that was shed from his head so that I can win and have success, you come uh, as Abigail leads us to, to sing. Just come right now. Come right now. Hallelujah. And come as an entire cell group. And come with your best friend in, uh, from your cell group. Just begin to make your way forward. And as you come, just stand in front here. All right, just stand. Just come. Just come. And say, God, today I want to be set free from that failure. I want to be set free from that fear. Just and leaders, you can also begin to come forward and just prepare yourselves to minister. Just come right now. to Pastor Roland. Many, of, many more of you need to come. And one of the things that I learned in my life, just now I shared with you, number one, don't miss church during exams. But number two, keep coming to the altar to allow the Lord to minister to you. So as Abigail leads us to sing, don't remain stuck where you are. Take a step of faith forward. And we're going to pray for you as we just sing this once or twice. Alright? Just come right now. Come. You need a cell brother or cell sister to accompany you forward. You just tell them and they will come forward with you. They will come forward with you. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declare play has no claim on me. Then came the morning that said the Chorus one more time, and they're going to minister to you, all right? Jesus is yours. Salvation
you just stop praying and listen to Pastor Roland for a while? Okay, just listen to Pastor. I'm going to minister to you right now. Listen to me. The blood of Jesus is something that is supernatural. Those, those of you in uh, like kind of link up in, sh- in your shoulders, can you all just break up for a while? <laughs> Sounds like a terrible word, but just break up for a while. Just listen to me, okay? We want to go to minister to you individually uh, as you pray for But listen to me very carefully. The blood of Jesus is something supernatural. There was one G12 conference that Pastor Caesar taught us about the blood of Jesus. And I remember closing my eyes because I needed something for God to set me free from one area of my eyes. I remember closing my eyes and the moment I closed my eyes and lifted up my head, I saw like a drop, just one drop, just one drop of the blood of Jesus. I saw it in my mind and I saw this one drop of the blood of Jesus just falling towards me. And it came towards me and the moment that blood, that that blood of Jesus, that one drop hit me, so-called touched me and hit me, I felt power and I just started to cry and cry and cry because that one drop of the blood of Jesus that touched me brought healing over my life. And I believe many of you are going to be ministered by the Lord right now like that. It doesn't have to be the same way as me, okay? But the blood of Jesus is supernatural. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to place one hand upon your heart right now everybody and just close your eyes right now and the other hand I want you to lift okay why don't we do this just just use both hands and put it upon your heart right now and I want you to begin to close your eyes right now and I want you to begin to utter a prayer yourself and say Lord I receive the blood of Jesus that flows from his head I receive the blood of Jesus that flows from His head. And if your your head, your your own head is kind of of bowed down, I want you to lift up your head, okay? Lift up. Lift up your head. Close your eyes and lift up your head. And tell the Lord, Lord, I receive the blood of Jesus that flowed from His head. Father, in the name of Jesus, let the blood of Jesus that flowed from the head of Jesus, let the blood of Jesus that flowed because of the crowns that were piercing his head and he was beaten, he was mocked, the crown that was just so sharp with the thorns and he was being beaten that caused blood to flow from his head. Let that blood right now come and begin to touch every single young person right now. I want you to receive it right now. And some of you, in your imagination, in your mind, you begin to see the blood of Jesus touching you. Come, Lord. More, Lord Jesus. More, Lord Jesus. I see the blood right now touching some of you and freeing you from that failure right now, from that sense of failure that you feel, the blood of Jesus touches you right now. And the Lord shows me those words that I read out just now, loser, lousy, failure, curse, hopeless, not good enough, second best, third best, some of these words, the blood of Jesus is beginning to come and heal you of those words that you have heard right now from your parents, from your friends, from your loved ones, from people you trusted. And some of you, I see a picture you have been laughed at and and that moment when you have been laughed at and mocked, there's a hurt in your life that trapped you in that sense of failure and brokenness. The blood of Jesus begin to heal you right now. Begin to heal you right now. Begin to heal you right now. Fear of failure, I break your power over our lives right now. Just receive, just receive right now. Let the Lord touch you right now. Yes, don't open your eyes. Keep your eyes closed. Just continue to receive right now. To receive right now. Receive right now. If tears are flowing down your eyes, just allow the tears to flow. Let the Lord begin to heal you right now. More, Lord. 
more of you holy spirit 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 yeah some of you are suffering from depression if you're suffering from depression begin to receive the blood of jesus that flow from his head right now the blood of jesus begin to heal you of that depression that comes from stress that comes from worry Yes, the Lord is sending the power of His blood over depression right now. The power of the blood of Jesus is soaking up that depression, is soaking up that, that stress that you're feeling right now. Yes, just begin to receive healing right now. Begin to receive healing right now. The, 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 the darkness that you, you kind of feel in your life or when you sleep at night, that darkness in your mind that you feel, that stress that you feel in your heart, the blood of Jesus begin to come and minister to you right now. More, more Lord, 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 come. More Holy Spirit, 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 more Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Put one hand upon your heart, the other hand just open up right now. The blood of Jesus begin to bring and restore joy to you right now. Joy right now. Satisfaction in being a student. Satisfaction and joy of studying. Not because you want to strive to be number one, but you want to study so that you can glorify God. The Lord puts that into your heart right now. The joy that comes from glorifying God. The joy that comes from knowing your purpose is to be a student that glorifies God. The Lord begin to put that into your heart right now. And some of you, the Lord begin to bring a change to you this very week. When you go back and revise for your exam, something is going to change. When you look at your books, when you look at your revision, when you look at the papers that you are reading and revising, you feel a joy because you are revising for the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, begin to come right now. Let your blood begin to heal these young people right now. Begin to cut off every depression. Begin to cut off every stress. Begin to cut off every fear. Begin to cut off every failure right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Put your one hand upon your heart. The other hand open up. Just pray together with me. Say, Father. Come on, ten times now. Say, Father. Father. In the name of Jesus. I receive the blood of Jesus. I receive the blood of Jesus. That flow from His head. I receive the blood of Jesus. I receive the blood of Jesus. Every drop of it. Every drop of it. That flowed from the head of Jesus. That flowed from the head of I Jesus. I receive it into my life right now. I receive it into my life right now. Every drop of blood of Jesus. Every drop of blood of Jesus. Remove my failures right now. Remove my failures right remove now. Remove my depressions right now. Remove my depression. Remove right my now. striving right now. Remove my striving right remove now. Remove my stresses right now. My stresses right remove now. every negative word, remove every negative word that, I've heard in my life. that I've heard in my life. Lord, let your blood, Lord, let your blood heal, me right now. heal me right now. Father, Father in, the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, wash away every failure. Wash away every, failure. Wash away every fear. Wash away every fear. Wash away every fruitlessness. Wash, away every fruitlessness. wash me clean right now. I apply the blood of Jesus in my life. I apply the blood of Jesus in my life. Now I want you to lift up both hands to the Lord and pray together with me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Come on, ten times louder. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I apply the blood of Jesus. I apply the blood of Jesus. That flowed from His head. That flowed from His head. I receive success. I receive success. I receive fruitfulness. I receive fruitfulness. I receive victory. I receive a sense of conquest. I receive a sense of conquest. I receive a sense of bonus for my life. I receive a sense of bonus for I my life. I receive a sense of bravery. I receive a sense of bravery. I receive the success of God. I receive the success of the God. The life of God. The life of God. The prosperity of God. The prosperity of God. I receive it into my life right now. I receive it into my life right now. I walk. I 
Covered by the blood of Jesus. Covered by the blood of Jesus. I walk in victory. I walk in victory. Because of your blood. Because of your blood. I am a winner. I am a winner. Never a loser. Never a loser. And even my failures. And even my failures. I will overcome. I will overcome. Through the blood of Jesus. Through the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. At a count of three, I want you to shout a mighty shout of victory. Shout a shout that a winner shouts. Shout a shout that someone who has success shout. Because we have Jesus and His blood that gives to us the victory. Are you ready right now? And even if you're not up here for uh, uh, in front, you shout together with us at the count of three. Here we go. One, two, three. Shout a mighty shout right now. Shout a mighty shout right now. Shout a mighty shout right now. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, shout. Shout a shout of victory for your life. Shout a shout of success for your life right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And go ahead and give Jesus a big clap of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Brother to brother, sister to sister. Give each other a hug and say, you can win and have success through Jesus. You can win and have success through Jesus. God bless you. And if you lift up your hands just now or you want to receive Jesus, just uh, allow your friends to bring you to a room outside and we will see you next week. God bless you.